On the magic island of the South Seas, time is very precious. The mad scientists who call themselves Euclidians measure time in seconds because they are too busy to use minutes. When Mrs. Gregory, Captain Bradford, and Jerry Hall landed the Gregory yacht at the island and found Mrs. Gregory's long-lost little daughter, Joan, they thought the idea of putting such value on time was ridiculous. Now time has become very precious to those on board the captive Gregory yacht. It is just after 8 o'clock at night. Captain Tex Bradford has been gone 15 minutes, trying to swim out through the ring of fog and gas surrounding the island and release one of the little homing pigeons on which so much depends. A sudden electrical storm sweeps over the weird island as Mrs. Gregory, Jerry, and Joan huddle in the radio cabin on the yacht. This is a terrible storm, Mother. Are you not glad your boat is safely moored to the pier here now? Oh, this storm wouldn't hurt the boat, Joan. We came through a couple of them on the way down here. On Euclidia, we hardly noticed such a storm, as all the quarters are soundproof. But on this boat, it seems very terrifying. You will learn to love the natural things, Joan, dear. Things that are merely terrible in a natural way, if we ever get off this horrible island. Well, I'm going back to the engineer's quarters and wait for text there. I'll let you know the minute there's any news. You will be careful, will you not, Jerry? I would not like anything to happen to you. Hear that, Mrs. Gregory? Joan's getting kind of stuck on me. I am not stuck at all. You see, I am quite free to move at will. You mustn't mind Jerry, my dear. His expressions are a little puzzling at times. But, Jerry, one time you say I am stuck up when I am not sticking up on anything. And now you say I am stuck on you when I am not even near you. Oh, I ain't got time to teach any better now. I got to get back on duty where I belong. Oh, Jerry, the storm is bad, isn't it? Yeah, I can make it all right. See you as soon as Tech gets back. Will Jerry be quite safe, Mother? Yes, Joan. He has only a few feet to go along the deck to the engine room. There's not enough wind to make the footing dangerous. I am glad of that. Jerry is a foolish boy, but he's also a nice boy. And I should not like anything to happen to him. Joan, this storm, all that lightning flashing around the island... What effect does that have on all the electrical devices the Euclidians maintain? I'm afraid I do not understand just what it is you wish to know. This magnetic ring of fog around the island. Will the magnetic force be maintained through this electrical storm? Yes, Mother. Euclidia has been struck by lightning during many storms. But G-47 and his assistants have developed some means of carrying the lightning off without harm to the island or instruments on it. Yes, of course they would have protected themselves. Then even in this storm, Tex will have the danger of the magnetic ring, as well as the gas. Oh, I was stupid about that. I might have told you. Might have told me what? Is there something different about the magnetic ring in a storm? Not the magnetic ring, but the gas ring. The rain will so dilute the gas, which is very soluble in water, that there will be little or no danger from the gas. Oh, that's wonderful, Joan. I only wish Tex knew that save him the trouble and danger of trying to swim underwater beyond his endurance. I think the clever captain will have figured that out for himself. I remember he said he was sure the gas would not be effective in water. Then he should remember that and swim on the surface. I think so, Mother. And with the rain, he would swim on the surface without danger of being seen. And Tex can swim and float for hours. Oh, what a relief that is, my dear. The storm came up about ten minutes ago. When Tex had been gone about five minutes. He would, of course, swim beyond the ends of the piers before he released the pigeon. Yes, of course he would. And the piers are 200 feet long. Then it would take him some time to get the pigeon safely out of the celluloid swimming suit. And he would start back after discarding the oxygen tank. He has hardly had time to return, Mother. You're right, dear. And he wouldn't hurry back. In fact, he would stay beyond the end of the pier as long as he was swimming easily and naturally. Because his return might attract attention. But did he get out safely? Oh, I think you need not worry about that. The alarm would have sounded before this if he had not safely passed the protection rings. But that storm, the lightning flashing. Look, Joan, it lights up this room as if it were day. And through that tiny port, what if lightning strikes the island while the captain's swimming through the magnetic fog? Oh, Joan, what of that? Mother, that is a terrible thought. I know the scientists use the magnetic ring of fog in some way to carry off the lightning and ground it into the water. And it's just as if Tex were swimming through the very thing that had been built to handle the discharge. Just as if you held a lightning arrestor in your hand during a storm. I'm afraid that would be it, Mother. 
Oh, Tex, Tex. Why doesn't he hurry? I'm going to call Jerry back from the engine room again. He may have heard or seen something of the captain. No, Mother. Jerry has his place there, waiting for the captain. And we have our places here, waiting for them both. It would not please the captain and Jerry if we did less than our duty. Joan, you're the most wonderful daughter in the world. You have more courage than your mother. What is that? The signal to submerge. Mother, this is going to be something of... of danger and terror, I think. To submerge? You mean to submerge the island? Yes, Mother. I told you the island could be submerged so that a boat could pass over the top of it. But, Joan, do you realize what that means? This yacht is tied to the island, this boat. Wh what will happen to us? And Tex is swimming out there somewhere. Joan, what? There is the location signal. Five strokes on that gong after the signal to submerge. That means at this pier, Pier 5, where this yacht is held fast. But what exactly can that mean? Is it possible to submerge only one section of the island? No, I am not sure I understand that signal. Unless... Yes, it could be. There is an anchorage lock at this pier. I think your yacht is to be drawn inside the island and submerged. This yacht submerged? Yes, floated within a lock under the island floor and then submerged with the island. What did that mean, Joan? The submerging operation has begun. This boat is now being lowered between the piers. But, Joan, we'll, we'll drown. This boat can't be submerged. It will not be submerged as you mean it, Mother. It will be... Hey, Mrs. Gregory, do you know what's going on? Why, Joan says they're going to submerge this yacht. Yeah, the water's going down right now in the space between the piers. They're going to take the yacht into a lock under the island someplace. But Tex, he isn't back, Jerry. Well, no, Mrs. Gregory, he isn't. Oh, Jerry, that is very bad. Well, can't he get back now, Joan? No, Mother. Unless the captain could have been within the slip formed by the two piers here, he could not get in without being seen. The ends of the piers are now joined by watertight gates to allow the space between them to be used as a lock. I'm going out there and try to find Tex. Oh, no. No, you're not. Why, Jerry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gregory. I don't mean to be rude, but you're not going out there. Yes, I am, Jerry. I can swim. And if Tex is out there in that water alone, hopelessly shut off from the island, I'm going after him. He won't know what's going on here. He'll be afraid to return for fear of giving away the escape of the pigeon. Now, look here, Mrs. Gregory. Captain Bradford is in command of this boat. He gave me my orders, and I'm going to carry him out. Jerry is right, Mother. The captain would want you to stay here. This is my yacht. I'm going off to Then you'll have to lick me to do it, Mrs. Gregory. I'm sorry to act like this, but orders are orders. And the last thing the captain told me was to keep you on board if I had to tie you in a chair. And I'm going to do it. Jerry, you're doing what you think is right. But the storm is over. And I'm going to swim out there while I've still got a chance. You have no chance now, Mother. These locks empty very rapidly. And by now the water is not even covering the lock gate at the end of the pier. You could not swim out... And if you tried to walk out to the end of the pier, you would be stopped by a guard. But Tex out there, how will he get back? Now look here, Mrs. Gregory. You've got to buck up and face this thing. We don't dare let anyone see us worried about a thing. They don't suspect yet that Tex swam out with that pigeon. And if old G-47 got wise to that, he might do something that, well, so Tex couldn't ever come back. Joan, what do you think about it? I, I don't seem to think very clearly where Tex is concerned. Jerry is right, Mother. We must act as if nothing had happened to frighten us. We will be quite safe, of course, when the yacht is taken inside the island. It will float in the submarine lock just as safely as it does here. But if we act nervous, it could only be for one reason, that we were worried about someone not on board. That's the idea, Joan. And as long as G-47 thinks Tex is with us, he'll find some way to get out of the water and back on the island without the Euclideans knowing what he was doing. Well, at least we can go out on deck and see what's happening. I think that would be all right. Do you not think so, Jerry? No, I don't. I told the skipper and the engineer to stay under cover, and I think we'd better do the same thing. If they see us on deck without text, they'll... Well, they'll know he isn't aboard. Oh, I suppose you're right. But it seems so terrible to just sit here and do nothing while this boat is being taken inside the island. 
How will Tex get back to us? How will he know what's happened? I guess he'll figure that quick enough, all right. When he finds the gate closed at the end of the pier, then he'll have to swim around to one of the other piers and walk right up on the island. Oh, that will be bad, Jerry. Then G-47 will know the captain has been in the water, and it will take them only a few minutes to discover that a pigeon has been sent. Oh, that doesn't matter. The pigeon's gone, and I'm willing to chance at getting to Johnson's boat. If only Tex is safe. I'll feel a lot better when he's back on board with us. Gee, there's Tex now. Come in. Oh, it's G-47. It is I. What do you want here? I merely wanted to assure you there was no danger. Your yacht will be safely taken into a submarine chamber on the island. And all on board will be quite safe. Then what? Then the island will be submerged completely. Oh, Mother, the island, it will all be submerged. You mean there won't be anything left above the water? Not a thing. Nothing for a man to hold on to or walk upon, for example. But, of course, as you are all on board, you have nothing to fear. No, we have nothing to fear. Precisely. However, if one of your party was absent, say, uh, out swimming around the ends of the piers... Yes, suppose. What then? The unlucky person would soon drown, <laughs> swimming around where this island once was. <laughs> The magic island is going to be submerged. The Gregory yacht is slowly sinking below the surface of the island as the water is pumped out of the lock in which the yacht has been held. G-47 has just left the radio cabin after assuring Mrs. Gregory and Jerry and Joan that they were quite safe on board the yacht. Captain Tex Bradford left half an hour ago to swim outside the rings of fog and gas surrounding the island and release a pigeon to Johnson's boat. The yacht is ready to be drawn into the island submarine lock. The giant pumps have lowered the water in the lock to the level of that within the island, and the boat rides easily. But in the radio cabin, Mrs. Gregory, Joan, and Jerry are terrified. I'm going out on that deck, Jerry. Orders or no orders, I'm going out there. But, Mother, Captain Bradford said you were not to do that. Oh, might as well go now, I guess. We didn't fool anybody. You think G-47 knew Tex was out there swimming when he, when he came into the cabin just now? Yes, Mother. G-47 was smiling and quite pleased with himself. And when he looks and acts like that, it is only because he has done something particularly mean or terrible to someone. That's what I thought, too. No, when the old guy said we needn't worry if we were all on board, he knew we weren't all on board. So we, we might as well go out on deck and watch how this thing is done. G-47 must have known we would be going out. He didn't even close the door. G-47 knows nearly everything that everyone is going to do, almost before they know it themselves. But if Tex is out there somewhere... Swimming beyond the end of the pier, he'll be helpless. What can we do about it? Nothing right now. But Tex has probably got some ideas of his own. And I'll bet this island don't do any sinking without his getting on it. But that would do him no good, Jerry. If he were not admitted to one of the chambers, he would only drown when the island was completely submerged. Oh, I can't stand this any longer. Come on, I'm going out on deck. Gee, Mrs. Gregory, look at that. Why, we're, we're way below the top of the island. Yes, Jerry. This lock between the piers is like a great steel aqueduct. Are these piers solid to the ocean floor, Joan? Oh, no, Mother. Only to the fifth level. And only two of them have locks between them as this one has. So the water may be pumped out. The false bottom is steel. From the fifth to the tenth level, the main part of the island is round and smooth so that it may all be submerged. You really mean the whole island will go down till the top of it is 40 or 50 feet below the ocean? Yes. Large ships pass over it easily, and the island is so smooth and tapering toward the top and center that when a ship tries to anchor here, the anchor merely slides over the top of the island. Gee whiz. And we can do nothing. Just stand here and wait until we're taken into that lock. Hey, listen. The pumps have stopped. We must be down. Yes, Jerry. 
The water in this lock is now at the level of the water in the lock inside the island. The gate will open into the island now. There is a lock gate in that smooth wall ahead? Yes, Mother. See, it is opening now. Golly, it's opening just as easy and as quiet as everything else on this island works. Not a sound from it. No, but for the water rushing through it to even up the levels, we shouldn't have noticed it. And how light it is back in there. The Euclidians use a great deal of light where it will not be seen from outside. All the subterranean chambers are brilliantly lighted. We're moving. The boat's starting to slide into the lock. Are we being pulled by magnets, Joan? Yes. The floor of this lock is covered with a series of magnets. The boat is perfectly controlled. But from where? I see no one. Not even on that ramp along the inside of the lock. It is all controlled from the central chambers. The position of the boat is clearly indicated by the action of the magnet. Boy, what a place this is. And when we are inside, what can we do then? Hey, wait a minute. The mast is sitting at the top of the lock. It's going to crack. Well, can't we stop it? I'll gladly unstep the mast rather than break it. No, Mother, there's no time. The yacht is being put in here because of some emergency. They will just break the mast off. It has happened to other boats here. Gee, there goes the radio spars. Now we have much of an area left. The mast is nearly broken now. I hope the strain doesn't start the seams in the hull. Will we be safe standing here? Sure we will. Those deck plates will hold all right. The whole thing's going to fall on the after cabin there. Oh, there it goes. Look out for flying splinters. Gee, that's too bad, Mrs. Gregory. It did a lot of damage. Oh, Mother, your beautiful boat. Oh, never mind that. I can get another boat, but Tex... Take Quiet, Mrs. Gregory. Mother, you must be careful. Oh, I know, and I suppose G-47 can hear all we say, but I've reached the point where I don't care. Tex is out there somewhere, and nothing else matters to me. It all seems so hopeless, doesn't it? And you love the captain so dearly. I am very sad for you, Mother. Oh, me too, Mrs. Gregory. But don't give up hope. Tex is a smart guy. No telling what he's done. You're just saying that to cheer me up, Jerry. You know there isn't one chance in a million Tex could be safe. Well, I got a hunch. And when I get a hunch, everything's going to come out slick. Look, Mother, the stern of the boat is nearly inside the lock now. Yes, dear. And soon the gate will close and, and Tex... Tex will be outside in the water. He can't swim forever. So many things might have happened oh, to him. Take it easy. Please, Mrs. Gregory. You're so swell and I'm so sorry for you. Well, I could bust right out and bawl like a girl. But it wouldn't do any good. Oh, you're right, Jerry. You're a sweet boy. Tex would want me to keep my chin up. Why do you say that, Mother? Keep your chin up. Your chin has not fallen down. <laughs> Joan, my dear, you and Jerry would almost make anything possible. We're pretty swell, ain't we? Jerry, I have told you that ain't is not correct. Well, I know it ain't. Then why do you insist on saying oh, it? Yeah, the gate's closing. The yacht's inside. And out there in that cold water, in the dark... Now, steady, Mrs. Gregory. Don't say any more now. Someone is coming along this ramp. Coming toward us. Not a word about how we really feel. You too, Joan. Keep a stiff upper lip. But how will it help anyone for me to keep my upper lip stiff? Oh, forget it. Just say nothing. Let me do the talking. I think you might well be trusted to do it better than the rest of us, Jerry. Yes, someone is coming and making no sound, of course. It is G-47. And that is very strange. Why do you say that, Joan? That's what I'd like to know. I don't think anything that guy does is strange anymore. It is strange that G-47 would come down into the submarine locks. He always stays in the main control chamber when submerging and leaves these locks to his assistants. He's certainly looking the yacht over carefully. I wonder what he wants. I wish he'd come over here and get it over with. That guy makes me feel like I had some porcupine soup with the needles in it. I do not understand what you Never mean. Never mind, Jerry, dear. Hush now. Here he comes. Hey, there, G-47. What's the idea of breaking up Mrs. Gregory's boat? You will make him angry, Jerry. I don't want him to think we're worried about anything else. I must say that you've treated us rather roughly. Might we inquire, G-47, what caused the sudden decision to run us into this lock? Uh, you might, and you have. A little later, you will witness an interesting demonstration. If you care to come to the neptoscope control chamber, you will see... Uh, uh, no, no, I shall not tell you... It will be more pleasant to surprise you. We will be glad to come and witness any demonstration you care to give us. Sure. Want us to come right now? I think not until we are submerged. 
Is that not so, G-47? Precisely, Cleostra. It will have no value until we are submerged. You will bring the dear captain, of course? Why, yes, of course. Yeah, sure, sure. We'll bring him, if he wants to come. I feel reasonably certain Captain Bradford would be very happy indeed to have the opportunity of witnessing the demonstration from within the island. <laughs> you will be notified when to appear. Then you may tell the captain if you can find him. Gee, he's gone. Right through that wall. Yes, Jerry. There are many automatic doors along the walls of these locks. There is nothing about it that cannot be explained. Although, if you are not watching yes, closely, Yes, yes, Joan, seems... dear, but never mind that now. Did you hear what G-47 said? We might bring the captain if we could find him. He knows Tex isn't aboard. He knows we can't find him. He's taunting us. Tex is lost, lost, dear. Here hear? now, Mrs. Gregory, <laughs> you've got to quit that. Come on, in the cabin. Yes, oh. Mother. Someone will be watching us, and we must not let them see how we feel. You take your mother's arm on that side, Joan. Yes. I'll open the door when we get to no, it. No, Jerry. I'm going to stay right out on this deck. Stay where I can see, where I can watch for Tex. But there is nothing to see, Mother. We are inside the lock. Walls of steel all about us. We could see nothing, not even the water of the ocean. Oh, of course, Joan, you're right, but I feel so helpless. Just a minute, Mrs. Gregory, and we'll be fixed up all nice inside the cabin. Then we can plan quietly what we can try to do, and you'll feel better. Here we go now. Go right in, Mrs. Gregory. Come, Mother. Yes, dear, yes, I'm... I'm all right. Now, just a second, I'll find the light switch. That's strange, Jerry. We left the lights on when we went out of the cabin. So we did, Mother. Yeah, that's right. I guess that falling mast must have put them out. Uh, I put them out. Tex, Gee, the whiz. captain. Oh. Yes, I put the lights out just as the mast fell. So G-47 would think the falling mast had wrecked the wiring, and I could move in here unnoticed. Oh, Tex. Tex, dear. There, there, now, Pat. Don't cry, darling. Oh, I'm so happy. I, I have found the <laughs> light switch. Well, don't turn them on yet. Why not, Jerry? Oh, uh, just because. But why not, Jerry? I will turn them on. Oh, Mother. Oh, boy. <clears throat> no, Jerry, no. Joan did perfectly right in turning on the light. Yes, dear, you, you did quite right. <laughs> well, anyhow, I think they ought to be off on account of G-47 seen in here. He thinks you're drowned, Tex, or still trying to swim around out there. Well, this cloth will keep anyone from seeing in here. I've got to tell you the news. Yes, Tex, what happened? You can see what happened to us. You know why the yacht has been pulled into this lock? Why the island is going to submerge? Yes, but one thing at a time. In the first place, the pigeon got away safely. And he's been gone nearly an hour now. That means he's 30 or 40 miles from here on his way to Johnson's boat. That's wonderful, Tex. And he ought to make it all right. Gee, that's swell, sir. You did a slick job of it. But Captain Bradford, G-47 knows you were swimming around out there. He must know it. And he would also know that you had released the other pigeon. Yes, that's true. And they'll send airplanes or, or ray guns or something out to fly the pigeon down or kill it. No. G-47 doesn't dare send out a plane or a submarine or anything else. Why well, not? I see no reason, because Captain Why? Because there's a large fleet of battleships coming. I heard guards talking on the pier about it. Some large fleet converging on this position to hold battle practice. And the island has to submerge. Then... Then they can't do anything to stop the pigeon? Not a thing, son. That pigeon will get to Johnson's boat. 